Alright, welcome back to another Budget Gem or Budget Bust. Today, I've got a contender for you for one of the lowest cost per watt amplifiers on the market today. This is the AudioPipe APMI 2000. Um, you'll remember previously, before I had the 81 on my old AMM1 setup, um, I tested the APMI 1500, which did pretty good. Not didn't blow me away. In fact, it was a little overrated on uh, the certified tests. And a lot of you out there had commented on the video and said, hey, we all kind of know the APMI 1500 is okay, but nothing spectacular. But I've had great luck with the 2000 version. So I said, you know what? For $167, which is what I paid for this, this is, you know, if it does what it says, this is an amazing deal. So we're going to check it out today, we're going to unbox this amplifier, and we're going to strap it up to the 81 amp dyno, and we're going to find out exactly how much power this one puts out. So we're going to jump into the unboxing right now and see what comes in the box. Alright, let's unbox the Atme 2000. Uh, first thing we get right here, of course we have our owner's manual, uh, warranty card, your screws that are in there. This amplifier is rated at. Let me uh, just dig in here. If you can read that or not, it is rated at 770 watts by one at 4 ohms, 1300 watts by one at 2 ohms, and 1944 watts at 1 ohm. Um, and that is all at 1% THD. So, we'll find out shortly if that's real or not. Uh, we have our remote base knob and cable. And this does use the 3.5 millimeter plug, so be careful. Uh, make sure this cable isn't pulled or tugged, otherwise it'll pop out. Um, really nice base knob here. It's kind of a, a mesh machine top on there. Really nice feeling knob here. Potential, ooh, that's, it does feel nice. Very nice there. Uh, so, audio pipe didn't cheap out on this. Got uh, two little mini screws. I don't know what these are going to be for. These are two little mini screws. Can't really, I would never mount my uh, amp with that. Maybe it's for this. Uh, these do come with a fuse inline fuse holder for you. So, no worries about going out and buying one separately. And all that's left is one pretty sizable amplifier. Let's do the tape here. Dun, 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 dun. Got a nice, it's a pretty nice heft to it. Um, you can see the black audio pipe logo. It looks yeah, if you're used to audio pipe, this looks like any other audio pipe that you typically see. She measures in at just about 17 and a half inches wide, or long, I should say. Keep making that mistake. Uh, six and a half inches across, and about two and a half inches tall. So, it'll fit in a lot of places. It's not a very wide amplifier. In terms of size, you know, this is very comparable to length and width-wise of like the SCAR RP2000. Um, a little smaller than the Soundcube S12250. But again, this is only 167 bucks, so we're going to see what that can do. But uh, let's check out the sides of the amplifier. Along this side of the amplifier, we have our power terminals, both power ground and remote, as well as our speaker output terminals over here. Um, these speaker output terminals are pretty beefy. You can get probably either a six or four gauge wire in there. And over along this side, these are true one aught gauge uh, power and grounds. You can see here, I have a Toolmaker's one aught to one aught reducer and I fit in no issue at all. 
Along this side of the amplifier, we're gonna find all of our settings as well as our RCA inputs and our um, strapping output. So right here, of course, you have your inputs. And yeah, I can't believe for 167 bucks and supposedly a 2000 watt amplifier, um, this comes with a strapping function. So, okay, good job there, uh, audio pipe, including that. You have your gain setting here, your low pass filter, which is adjustable from, uh, looks like 180 hertz down to 40 hertz. You have your subsonic filter, which is adjustable from 50 hertz all the way to off. And of course your bass boost, which who cares? And that's really just your bass boost frequency right here. Um, so you can select that. You don't really find that too often. Usually it's a pretty hardwired, you know, usually like 45 hertz, etc. Um, and here is your bass boost from 0 to 12 dBs. Again, in my opinion, keep these two knobs all the way to the left. And what I didn't tell you, here's the 3.5 millimeter connector right there for your remote in. Okay, checking out the guts of the amplifier. Um, pretty decently laid out board, nothing really special. Um, some things in here, we get some heat sink uh, on top of the MOSFETs that are a little misaligned. Um, I don't know if I would really want this wire here going along where the MOSFETs connect to the board, but uh, you know, that's me, I'm not an amp designer. Um, otherwise, pretty decently laid out for Chinese made amplifier. Okay, folks, nothing left to do but to strap this amplifier up to the amp dyno and find out just how much power this audio pipe APMI 2000 actually produces. Does it come close to the 1944 watts it promises in the manual? Does it do over that? What about uh, the other ohm loads? What, what's going to happen? I don't know. Let's strap it up right now. Let's find out. I'll see you right after the test. Okay, folks, final thoughts here on the AudioPipe APMI 2000. 
Um, let's just start off with this. You just saw the numbers. Hell yeah, this thing is a budget gem. I, I'm i kind of speechless a little bit here, which, uh, you know, you guys have been watching this channel, you know that's very rare. But I'm very stunned by this. You know, I... I tested the app, the APMI 1500 and it did it did okay and I thought this one would do okay and I've seen other audio pipe amps on dynos and I thought they did okay and granted I mean people always been like well the APCLs you can run them at half ump sure until they burn out um, so at least that's what I thought and here's this one and I thought for sure I would see maybe 16, 1700 watts out of it. And uh, I would label it a budget gem because it cost 167 bucks. I never thought I'd end up with an effing steel. I mean, this thing did over 2100 watts uncertified. It did dead on nuts its certified rating at every single ohm load. It outperformed it across the board. I didn't even have 14.4 volts into it at any load. And you saw what it performed like. I mean, over 2,300 watts dynamic at one ohm. This thing's 167 freaking dollars. This is stupid. And you can strap it. You could strap it. You could have 4,000 watts for under 340 bucks. Let me say that again. Strap two of these up at two ohms as your final ohm load. You could get over 4,000 watts. For under 340 bucks, that is stupid. That's nuts. I'm I'm stunned by this amplifier. I did not think in a million years I would get out of it what I did. Um, some other differences I noticed from this one versus the APMI, it did not get hot while doing any of the tests. And I do repeated runs, and I do them bang, bang, bang over and over and over again. So this one did multiple one ohm runs in a row. Did fine. Did multiple four ohm runs, did fine. Two ohm runs, and all of them back to back to back, and it didn't feel warm on top of the heat sink. So that's already better. Um, the current pull, it's not exactly super efficient, um, but it's better than like the Precision Power 7000.1D I tested. Um, so, all right. Great job, Audio Pipe. I like it. Solid, solid performer. I never thought I'd live at a point where you could get just about 2,000 watts for under $200. I never thought in a million years I'd see it for under $170. Brand new, in the box. Look, fresh. This isn't a refurb. Solid, solid deal. You can get that any day of the week for about that price. So, amazing job, Audio Pipe. I like it. I think this might actually be the best cop cost per watt amplifier on the market. Insanity. All right. That's it for me for now. I got more amps to test. I'll see you next time. I love this channel.